Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, Lesson 73, I want to talk about defining and giving you examples of what an architecture fitness function is and how powerful they actually can be. Architecture fitness functions were first introduced in the Building Evolutionary Architectures book by Neil Ford, Rebecca Parsons, and Patrick Kay. A fantastic book, by the way. And they defined an architecture fitness function as as follows. An architecture fitness function provides an objective integrity assessment of some sort of architectural characteristic, such as scalability or responsiveness or performance, any, any kind of, of characteristic of your architecture. The other aspect of an architecture fitness function, though, from evolutionary computing is a particular type of objective function. And again, that objective provides the mathematical basis of measurement um, that is used to summarize how close a given design solution is to achieving its set aims. In other words, are we close to achieving what we want to do? Let me show you some examples, um, simple examples of a fitness function. For example, um, a TSP, the traveling salesperson problem, pr perhaps one of the most complex problems in computer science, is a great example. And so here we have the salesperson, and that salesperson travels to the various cities, hopping back and forth and back and forth before she ri finally arrives back at home. What do you suppose would be a good fitness function for this? And again, what it is, it's an objective measurement of some sort of characteristic of our problem. And so hit pause for a second and just take a look at this problem and think, well, what would I measure? What sort of fitness functions would um, I create? And so I'm going to give you a chance to hit pause here. Okay. Hopefully you hit pause and thought about it a little bit. Um, let me show you a couple. Um, some of the ones that you might have come up with, by the way, um, certainly distance is a good measurement. Cost might be one. Time might be another. And these might be effective fitness functions depending on what's important to us. Now let's use the typical one that's the length of the route. And so we can ask this question as a fitness function. How do changes to the routing algorithm affect the length of the route? And this is what a fitness function is used for. As we start making changes to the system, did it impact a certain characteristic, such as the length of the route? And so our current route length is 3,200. We made some changes to the algorithm within TSP to say, well, we think it would be better to go this way. All we have to do is rerun the fitness function, and we notice after the changes, now it's 3,460 kilometers. And so now we can fail that test and say, nope, whatever change you made has now increased the length or cost or time, whichever factors you want. Another way of doing this, what happens if we add an additional stop? Hmm, I don't know. Well, if we have a fitness function, which is an automated test, we now know that our current route length is 3,200 kilometers. We'd like to add an extra stop in Brussels. If we do that, it's still 3,200. And so the key point is here, now we know it's okay to add the stop. And so this is an example of a fitness function. You know, another great example of a fitness function, quite simply, um, I'm going to go through some examples in a little bit, but now, let me show you the categories of fitness functions. So fitness functions can take four different forms. And they can either be atomic or holistic. In other words, a fitness function that targets one specific area of the system or the system as a whole. And they can also be triggered or continuous, triggered based on some event that happens, either a, a commit, for example, or maybe a deployment. Um, or continuous, which basically just runs, let's say, in production continuously. Um, they could also be automated or manual. Not every fitness function has to be automated. And some things, uh, such as in Lesson 71, we took a look at measuring scalability, uh, the number of crashes. When a system crashes, it's really hard to automate the capture of that information. <clears throat> so quite simply, some of these may be manual. Also, trend and threshold. In other words, are we looking for a fitness function that's measuring a particular trend, which I prefer, by the way, because then it gets rid of those outliers, or are we looking for a particular threshold of some number of scalability or performance? Uh, another good example of a fitness function is, quite simply, the simian army. 
Let me introduce some of the members to kind of explain how a fitness function can actually work. Um, Chaos Monkey, as part of the Simeon Army, is what most people know of. Um, a Chaos Monkey basically goes around just starting to destroy services or servers uh, randomly to see how does the system behave from a scalability standpoint, a throughput standpoint, a recovery standpoint, when a server actually goes down. Oh, my favorite is Latency Monkey. Well, I've got a couple of favorites here, but Latency Monkey is actually one of my favorites. Um, uh, this fitness function um, kind of also steers chaos around, but essentially um, starts randomly adding significant latency to various requests and says, hmm, what happens? Did you handle that okay? Are timeouts handled in a graceful manner? Um, do circuit breakers trip, which is why I really love latency, latency monkey. It's, as a matter of fact, a really good way of testing circuit breakers. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, if you go into the uh, lessons, I believe the round lesson 13 or 15, um, I actually have a lesson on circuit breakers, but that's where the latency monkey would come in. A security monkey is another really great fitness function because security monkey not only looks for holes um, and tries to penetrate different um, servers, but also looks for expired certificates, which is something we sometimes kind of forget about. And so I really love Security Monkey. Um, the janitor monkey kind of um, starts looking and saying, you know, that resource hasn't been used very much, and so it puts it on watch. And if it's not used, then it deems it just inactive and starts destroying different services that just are taking up space and resources. Um, uh, the two biggies though, Chaos Gorilla. Chaos Gorilla takes down an availability region to be able to test failover um, within a production environment. And then the biggest member of Simeon Army, which of course is the Chaos Kong, takes down an availability center as opposed to just a small region. And so the Simeon Army is a good example of a fitness function, but they don't need to be that global. In other words, let me show you another great example of a fitness function. Let's say we have a developer and we have a fitness function that basically says the cyclomatic complexity of any piece of code cannot be greater than 30. And that means the number of if then, if then, if thens. So we have a developer and we've got some back end code marked in red and some front end code there in the blue. And the developer starts, of course, writing if the state's Alabama, then do something for Alabama. Well, if it's Georgia, do something for Georgia, else, else. Of course, there's a fitness function that says this is, of course, in the US, we have 50 states. And so this clearly, once they try to deploy this in the back end, boom, is going to fail. And so the developer says, well, that's odd. I need to do this code. I know. I know what I'll do. I'll write it in JavaScript instead, and I'll deploy it on the front end code. And so the developer does this. And of course, the architects outsmarted them because the fitness function sits there as well. And so now, young weary developer has no idea what to do. Uh, Glenn Vandenberg has a fantastic quote and that says, bad developers will move heaven and earth to do the wrong thing. And so now they cannot, they cannot deploy this code. Along comes the architect and says, well, let me talk to you about the strategy design pattern. And so a lot of architecture fitness functions can be used to mitigate bad practices in software development. Lastly, as, I saw, as we saw in lesson 71, uh, we can also use fitness functions in an automated fashion uh, to do trend, continuous, holistic, to say, send an alert in production if the average response time ever increases by 20% when the number of users increases um, exceeds a 10% increase. And what I'm looking for is an intersection between uh, that correlation, as we saw in Lesson 71, measuring scalability. So for more information, I would highly recommend the Building Evolutionary Architectures book by Neil Ford, Rebecca Parsons, and Patrick Kay. What a fantastic book. Um, this is where uh, the three of them first introduced this kind of idea of an architecture fitness function, uh, leveraging engineering fitness functions from architecture. And so I provided the link there. And of course, in developer2architect.com, you've got so many resources available. Software Architecture Monday, where all these lessons are. I do offer private training classes in architecture, microservices, and also analyzing architecture architecture, which you can get from the training tab there. And also um, visit my upcoming events page to see where I'm at um, in hopefully your area in terms of conferences I'm speaking at, uh, public trainings, and also uh, public online, online trainings as well.
And so this has been Lesson 73, Architecture Fitness Functions. And again, this is Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and thank you so much for listening.